Hello students, welcome back. In the previous video, we have seen how to capture packets in Kali Linux using a tool called as TCP dump. We saw approximately eight to nine commands and in each of those commands, we saw how we can capture different sort of packets originating from different IP addresses or destined for different IP addresses. We also saw that we can apply a lot of filters in our commands just to segregate the packets being captured. We can filter the packets based upon the protocols they are using. We can filter the packets based upon the ports they are using. We saw n number of such commands in our previous video. So in this video, we are going to learn how to analyze those packets and how to capture packets using a different tool called EtherCap. In this video, I'm going to show you what EtherCap is, how we can capture live packets using EtherCap, how we can sniff those packets and how to extract meaningful information out of those packets. Finally, I will also show you how to analyze the packets using Wireshark. So in essence, we have covered the tool TCP dump in the previous video. In this video, we are going to cover two tools that is EtherCap and Wireshark. So without wasting much time, let's start EtherCap. So what exactly EtherCap is? For opening the console of EtherCap, you simply need to type in sudo EtherCap. It will ask you for a password and this is what the output should look like. In case if you want a user interface instead of the command line interface, what you can do is you simply need to type in sudo EtherCap space minus capital G and this will open up a graphical user interface for running EtherCap. Let me minimize this terminal and focus on this GUI. So the UI of EtherCap looks like this. It will give you the options to select the various interfaces which you have. I have Ethernet zero interface as discussed in the previous video also. I don't want bridged sniffing, so let's keep it as it is. Once this is done, so basically you don't need to do any changes. In case you need to change the interface, you can do so. Otherwise, let's stick with the default values and press accept. So it will start the sniffer and now it will wait for your inputs. Inputs as in EtherCap is a very powerful tool using which you can actually carry out n number of attacks. Let's see how it is done. On this screen over here, you can see if I click on this globe button, you will see these sort of sniffing and active attacks you can carry out using EtherCap. We are not going to launch any attack right now. We are only concerned. We are only going to consider the sniffing aspect. So let me uh, so let me click on this ARP poisoning and inside which you will be able to sniff remote connections. Fine. But before that, let me show you one thing. EtherCap is a very powerful tool. It can be also used to check what are the various hosts which are connected to this interface 880. For that, what you can do is you simply need to click on this magnifying glass that is scan for hosts and once you click on it, it will scan the entire 255 hosts and it will fetch out some hosts which are currently linked with this interface. So it has already found out four hosts which are added to the Wi-Fi which I am using. So now click on this host list and it will give you a list of all the hosts which are connected to this particular Wi-Fi. So as you can see, there are these four connections and if you remember 106 is the IP address of my uh, Windows computer. 103 might be my mobile phone which is connected to the same Wi-Fi. 100 might be my other device which is connected to this, my printer for example and 0 0.1 is nothing but the main router or the gateway. Fine. So now I am interested in uh, sniffing all the packets of this 106 network. So again go to this ARP poisoning. Now click on sniff remote connections if it is already selected, let it be, press OK. Now it will ask you to add a target. Let me add this dot 106 as my target. Target is basically you are now selecting your targets where you are actually wanting to launch the attack or launch the packet sniffer. So simply click on add to target one and select any other target if you wish. For example, 103 again select add to target one and it depends which uh, it depends how many hosts you want to add to your target and once you're satisfied with the targets you can simply click on add to target one and keep waiting why waiting because now what is going to happen is 
whenever I do any activity on this 106 machine, those activities will be captured over here. How? Let me show you. Now, let me go to my main Windows machine and that is my target machine. And let me uh, go to a website, test world web. This is basically a, a testing website where you can actually uh, carry out attacks and keep on testing whether those attacks are working or not. So it is this website is basically meant to practice your attacking or hacking skills. It's uh, developed by Acunetics. So now if I go to the sign up page, if I enter any random value, for example, my name only as username and password could be Kali Pass, for example, and press login. So what should ideally happen is whatever data I have entered over here, that data should be highlighted over here as well. Let me show you. As you can see, it has already sniffed the user that is Sridhar passes this, etc, etc. Isn't it cool? Isn't it beautiful? As you can see, the username is shown in plain text as well as the password which was shown as uh, hidden values are also being captured and shown over here. So this is how Etter cap can be beautifully used for sniffing the packets. The only criteria is you should be present in the same network. And that is what we are going to learn in the next video. That is how to actually gain access to a Wi-Fi network by actively cracking it. So this is very useful. As you can see, the packets have been captured and it will keep on capturing the packets again and again until you stop this sniffing. Let me show you once again with the help of Wireshark how to actually analyze these packets. Let me quickly run up another terminal and let me open Wireshark. So this was all about Ethercap, but now let me show you the same thing with the help of Wireshark and how we can analyze those packets which we had actually captured in the previous video using Wireshark. So I will show you both of them one by one. First, let me open Wireshark. I guess I messed up with the password. Yeah. So now Wireshark is open. Select the interface ETH0, double click on it. It will start working in the background. So let me do the same thing over here. Let me reload this page. Let me do the same thing. This time the password should be different. Let me select a user ID as Sridhar Ayer and password I am typing over here 123 SR. SRI321 and press login. Now let Wireshark capture all the packets. Now what we can do is if you remember in the previous case we had applied some filters. Yes or no? So we are going to apply the same filter over here also. Type in IP address. This is the filter. Just change the values of the IP address. It is 192.168.0.106 that is the source and press enter. So all the packets which have actually originated from this IP address, that is my target or victim's IP address, only those values will be shown over here. Isn't it cool? This is why Wireshark comes really handy whenever we would like to or whenever we would want to analyze the packet captures, either live or through any packet captured file, PCAP file, which we may have on our hard disks. Right? So let me apply one more filter and show you how to actually capture the password, which I have just now entered. What you can do is you can add one more uh, filter over here. This particular filter could be this particular filter could be HTTP dot request dot method. Now, what is it exactly? Let me discuss this once again. As you can see, if I'm entering any value over here, that value is directly passed on to their servers which is the backend server using an HTTP request. So whatever values I enter in this text box, those values go to the database server using an HTTP request. That's quite obvious, I guess. But what is the method being employed over here? As we know, HTTP has two methods, either get method and post method. In this case, we are making use of post method because if you remember in get method, Whatever I type over here and press enter, all those values are appended on the URL. But as you can see in this case, uh, nothing is appended on the URL. So it is basically using a post method. So accordingly, we need to make some changes in our Wireshark filter. That is HTTP.request.method is equal to equal to double quotes P 
O S T in caps and then press enter. So only those packets which are actually using HTTP request method at, as posts, those values will be shown over here. And as you can see, if I could zoom it up, and as you can see, the source over here is the same source that is my victims machine 192.168.0.106. The destination is nothing but the destination of this website that is uh, testphp.worldweb.com. And method use this protocol use this HTTP. The length of that particular file is 714, I guess, 714. Okay. And the info this is what is our main concern. As you can see, there is only one distinct file as compared to all these files and it is called as user info.php. So basically, this is the file which is dealing with all the user uh, activities. This is dealing with all the uh, inputs, outputs, which are inputs and outputs basically, which are uh, taken from the website and sent to the server, web server or you can see the database server. So let me double click on this file. And as you can see, this is how the file looks like. Now we have to do some digging into this particular file to get hold of the password which was actually shared. How to do so? Let me click on this HTTP transfer protocol and let me go below. And as you can see over here, once I click this HTML form URL encoded, this is the username which I had entered and this is the password again in unencrypted format I can see over here. Why this is happening? Because as you know, this website is not secured. So it is not using HTTPS. It is simply using HTTP and whatever data is sent using this website, although it looks hidden, but that data is sent in clear text. And that is why I am able to sniff all those packets very easily. I can read the user IDs and I can even read the password being sent in clear text. Isn't it cool? So this is how we can make use of Ethercap as well as Wireshark. Both can do the same task, but Ethercap only displays it in a more concise manner. As you can see over here, uh, the output which is shown on Ethercap is very clear. It simply will show you the username, the password, etc. As you can see, it has also captured the second password, which I have entered using this particular website, Test World. So every single time you use that particular website, uh, you send some data, those data or those piece of uh, text will be captured and shown to you in plain text. This won't happen if you make use of HTTPS or SSL protocol because that encrypts the data. Fine. So this is how we can make use of Ethercap to actually sniff the packets and capture the uh, sensitive information such as usernames, passwords, etc, etc. You can also capture credit card information if they are sent through an insecure medium. Now let me go back and check whether we can analyze the PCAP format file which we had captured yesterday. So let me go back. Let me quit. And let me again open up Wireshark. Now over here we have uh, n number of options. Let me go to file, open the PCAP file we had captured yesterday. That is this one, traffic capture.pcap. Open it. And this is how the PCAP file looks like. This is where our analysis part will begin. We can simply make use of multiple display filters over here. As you can see that our IP address is originating from 106. I can again use this filter. IP address is equal to 192.168.0.106 as it was a very, uh, what you can say, very short packet capturing session. So it doesn't have many uh, packets over here. So it is only having these six packets that we had seen yesterday. And we had seen that all these packets were basically trying to send some ping requests, if you remember. So ping is nothing but some ICMP ping requests, which are sent from the client to the server to just ensure whether the server is active or not. So it is nothing but that only ICMP ping request, no response found, no response found. And finally, it gets some response back. You can see who has this particular IP address because what I was doing is I was actually firing a ping request ping and this was the destination 192.168.0.107 initially it was not getting replies and after some point of time after four seconds or so or four milliseconds or so it got the reply back in this format as you can see it is sending the reply back to 192.168.0.106 
at so and so particular IP address and so and so particular MAC address. So this is the corresponding MAC address for the corresponding IP address. So this is very simple. If you see over here, if you click on any of the packets, the corresponding hex equivalent will be shown over here. Similarly, this packet, this packet, this packet and so on. So it is very easy to analyze those packets, analyze those packet captures using Wireshark as compared to TCP dump because in TCP dump, everything is shown on the same console and it is very difficult to segregate those packets. Similarly, in Wireshark, you can add multiple filters over here. As you can see, if I type I, those uh, uh, filters will be suggested to me. Similarly, if I type TCP, I can segregate all these packets based upon the protocol they are using. As we can see that we don't have any TCP protocol packets over here. So let me type ARP and as a result, only those two packets which are using ARP should be highlighted as you can see. So it becomes really easy to uh, capture as well as uh, analyze those packets with the help of Wireshark. So in this video, we have seen uh, one more extra tool using which you can capture the packets, which is EtherCap. EtherCap can also be used to actively launch some attacks on the Wi-Fi network. It can even be used to launch man-in-the-middle attack, but that is not um, part of our scope. We are restricting ourselves to the forensic aspect. So we are just uh, looking into the data from a uh, passive point of view. But in the next video, we are going to learn how to actively uh, get access to a Wi-Fi network so that we can actually uh, do a live forensic investigation of a live Wi-Fi attack. So that is what we are going to learn in the next video. In this video, we also saw how to analyze those packets with the help of Wireshark. So all these tools go hand in hand. For example, if you uh, want to quickly dump all those packets, you can make use of TCP dump. If you can save those packets in a PCAP format, then it will be very handy to analyze them later on using Wireshark. Similarly, if you want to capture uh, uh, or get hold of sensitive information flowing through a network, you can make use of EtherCAP. So there are n number of tools. It simply uh, depends upon your domain. It, it simply depends upon your usage. And depending upon that, you can make use of the different tools we have uh, at our disposal. So I hope you like this video. Stay tuned for the next video where we are going to learn how to actually carry out a Wi-Fi attack using the available tools in Kali Linux. So stay tuned. Thanks a lot.